Jeep Wrangler 392 is the stupidest, most ridiculous, most over-the-top production Jeep ever built. And I love it. I hate that. I got to love you that. My hat goes off to Ford for building the Bronco, which forced Jeep to do this. On paper, it makes absolutely no sense. But once you start driving it, especially off-road, it makes perfect sense. Slip slide and away. day like today where you're out in your Wrangler, beautiful sunshine on a, a day that you're just not in any hurry and you can appreciate it, it's a magical thing. It really is. It just makes all that hard work and stuff pay off. 2022 Wrangler Rubicon 392 and Snazberry Pearl Coat. Running on BFG KM3s. Okay, so we're stopped in this mud hole. I'm just gonna... Yeah, it doesn't even phase it. it doesn't phase it. And that's the kind of mud that normally you just get stuck in Wrangler is a multiple personality vehicle. It's a convertible when you want it to be a convertible. It's a four-wheeler when you need it to be a four-wheeler. And it's a people mover when you need to be on the street. And the 392 takes it up to a whole nother level. XR or non-XR? So this is a non-XR 392. And I, I see the question comes up all the time, XR, non-XR. You know, to me, the biggest thing about the XR package is the gearing. Having the factory stock gearing is a nice benefit. I spent about 2,500 miles over the course of the last year with my friend's XR. More recently, a couple weeks ago, we were both out and driving the XR compared to driving this, so they're both running 35 inch tires. The real big differences that I came across were, it was, his seemed to be a little bit stiffer shock wise and it was definitely quicker off the line. Not much, but enough to be noticeable. If you're going up to 37s, I don't think that quickness is gonna even matter to you, to be honest with you. I know there's some upgraded steering components and some upgraded brake components. I really didn't notice any of that out and about and just doing the wheeling we were doing. To me, it wasn't a big deal. So that is Alligator Alley right on the other side of this canal. This canal is called the Crystal locally. Alligator Alley and the Crystal. And this is where, I don't know, five or 10 years ago, a kid got his arm bit off by the gator swimming in here. People still swim in these things. A muscle Jeep. And for somebody who enjoys horsepower and big torque, it's a great vehicle. The sound is amazing. Stock exhaust. When the valve is opened is just beautiful in my opinion. You hammer it, it gets good and deep and bassy. Not that annoying fart muffler type rasp. And when you need it to be quiet, you can just hit that button. I do fairly often when I'm coming into speed traps and areas where I don't want to attract that added attention. If I'm coming through neighborhoods or I'm out in the woods trying to be environmentally friendly to nature, keep the noise level down, I'll switch it off. And of course it's gonna walk right in the middle of the road.
trying not to make them run, but I'm sure that ground is probably not. Gators are uh, gators are extremely fast when they want to be. For short sprints, they can run. They can really haul. Three ninety two Rubicon handles these roads with no issues. It doesn't feel it never not even close to as jarring as my other jeeps and that will probably change when you get a, a lift and that's another thing you know of all the vehicles it's never perfect you can spend ridiculous amounts of money trying to make something perfect if you have enough money but every time and every time i've done it because it's done it every time was <laughs> put a lift on my vehicles it's never the same this by far rides better than any other Wrangler I've ever had the opportunity to, to drive. So what are the biggest things that I've seen people with Jeeps do stupid wise? And the probably the number one thing is it's really easy to flip a Jeep if you start sliding sideways in the mud or similar terrain because if it catches you're effed and I've seen it happen three or four times now over the years where somebody's sliding around got a lot of momentum going and they hit something hard a root or a big old piece of limestone and the next thing you know they're flying around and this thing I have to say definitely does slide around really easy when you start hammering that pedal because you got a lot of torque and power there that's getting put to mud, not to pavement. One thing you learn in Florida is always look down. See how it drops off. Rattlesnakes can bite from a good distance. So. Let's see what he is. So see that black stripe through his eye? sure how good this camera will pick this up but it drops way down there this thing is a beast I couldn't have asked for a more fun vehicle Woo! daily driver I've already put almost 21,000 miles on it in what 10 months the engine the sound is glorious the power 470 pound foot of torque 470 horsepower just so much fun and a lot of people would never understand the need for it I fully understand the need for it. I'm happy that the Bronco came along because it forced Jeep to make something like this, something over the top. A Wrangler 392 is a real personal choice. When you're dropping that kind of coin, you need to really think long and hard about what you want and what you expect. It's extremely pricey. You purchase this vehicle, you're getting up into rarefied air. You can find sports cars for the money of this Wrangler. So you have to make that decision. Is it worth it to you? Is it worth it to you to spend that kind of money on a Wrangler? Everything that I've wanted, it fits my needs perfectly. I daily this thing 
and it's a fantastic vehicle for a daily driver for me. If you have the opportunity and can afford to do it, do it. These vehicles aren't going to be around for long. But a Jeep 392, this vehicle has been so much fun. I can't stress enough, if you can swing one, do it. If you're a Wrangler fan or an off-road fan, it makes perfect sense. Some people just don't get it. And that's fine because some people aren't supposed to get it. Sure is different driving this thing with the sport exhaust off though because it just doesn't sound right it still drives right it just doesn't sound right it's expensive Jeep knew they could get it that kind of money for it and they have but it is so much fun to me it's worth every penny give me a Hellcrat motor I'd enjoy it even more is it practical for that reason? No, hell no. Why does something have to be practical to be fun? Most, but a lot of vehicles that elicit an emotional response aren't practical and that's what makes them so fun. They're outrageous, like a Viper or a Hayabusa that's blown. You know, it's just, it makes no sense, but yet it's outrageous fun. And that's what this vehicle is, just if you're some college guy or woman and you're having trouble making ends meet, it's definitely not a practical vehicle. But if you're somebody who's got a little bit of extra cash or you're a big car person with a little extra cash and you can swing it, I say do it. You never know when you're not going to be around to do it. So if you can do it, go for it. Have some fun and then sell it off when you're, when you're done with it, you know? A fantastic vehicle. If you have the opportunity to purchase one, do it. If you're a fan of a Wranglers or off-roading, you won't regret it. 48 degrees, 49 degrees. Doesn't happen often. Still got half the top off though. It's not really that bad. 